All right, perfect. Do you want to go right into questions? You're going to open it up. Sure, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, reminder to use the raise hand button if you have questions for Coach. With that said, no one's done it yet. Uh, Joe, you can start us off. Hey, Matt. Good to see you. Hey, Joe. Hey, just wondered uh, what the latest was with Christian. I know last week, of course, you said you hope to have him back. Is that still the plan? And you think he'll practice this week? Yeah, I mean, he, he practiced last week, so I'm, I'm sure he'll practice this week. Uh, I, I know he'll practice this week. And, uh, you know, just, just like last week, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that he gets uh, a release to us and we can activate him. Um, um, I think he, he, you know, he looks good. It, it just comes down to the doctors and the trainers and all those things, but yeah, I'm, I'm real hopeful we'll have. And you, you touched on this some in the past, but just kind of what, what will be your plan or Joe's plan to, to maybe kind of incorporate Mike uh, and Christian or, or will that be the plan at all? Yeah, I think Mike's a, you know, Mike, Mike's a starting running back. I mean, he's proven that he can play at the, the at a really high level. I think Curtis has shown what he can do as a back. Um, and, uh, obviously Christian is, is, uh, you know, an elite player. And so, um, you know, I know that we'll, uh, we'll have a plan to utilize all those guys. Let's go to Mike Solarte. Thanks Preston coach. Um, I, I don't know that there's anything that you can say about the guys that were on the COVID list. If they're close to returning, what updates have you gotten from you know, guys like, uh, Larson and, uh, Rasul and, uh, are they, you know, the doctors told you they're close. I mean, where do they stand? Uh, I, I just can't talk about the COVID stuff. Um, I'm sure Bruce can probably give you some feedback in terms of that. And then in, in that, I'm sorry, sorry, Preston, in that regard, how did you feel your O-line held up in with those guys being on the, you know, being on the outside and even in the, in the secondary as well, because the secondary seemed to be a little, uh, a little thin when you guys finished up against Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, um, you know, we, we, we look forward to getting Rasul back. He's, he's really, uh, a big part of our defense, um, not just uh, not just physically, but also emotionally. Um, you know, you, you're 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 disappointed anytime someone's you know down. You know, Rasul went down. Dante played really well. Then he went down. Um, you're counting on some some other guys, but at the same time, what we found out was some of those guys can play well. And uh, you know, things that we knew, but you know, you see it live and in, in, in you know in stereo. So um, you know, you build it builds depth for the future. Um, uh, the same thing on the offensive line, you know, um, obviously we'd love, we look forward to having Sko and Larson back um, when they're healthy. Um, but some other, you know, and, and both of those guys have, have been good role guys for us, but you know, the, the rest of the guys have um, uh, been out there, you know, hopefully we have Russell back this week. Um, you know, I'm not sure how that'll progress, but um, we'd love to have him back at left tackle if, if he's healthy. Let's go to David Newton, followed by Scott Fowler. Hey, Matt, um, I agree with you, what you were saying about um, Mike Davis being a starting running back in the NFL, but what specifically can Christian bring to the offense that maybe has been missing since he's been gone? Um, no, I mean, I think Christian, and I'm not, I'm not labeling this against Mike or anyone else, but Christian just, you know, he brings elite production, you know, um, days when you don't, you know, you're not great on third down. He's a tremendous third down matchup. Um, explosive runs, um, catching the ball out of the backfield. I mean, he's, you know, he's, you know, he's one of the best players in the National Football League. And so, you know, since he's been hurt, you know, the guys have fought their, you know, they've, they've gone three and three since he's been out. Um, and, you know, like, like any, like any great player, um, you feel better about your chances when he's there than when he's not. Um, that being said, when he does come back, uh, we also uh, are going to count on Mike Davis too, because what we found out is he's a winner. We can win with him. So, you know, um, you hate having injuries. You hate, you know, seeing your guys go down, but it is an opportunity for other guys to step up. But I think Christian will bring, uh, he'll bring um, an energy, uh, the level of production that'll, um, that'll, you know, make our team better. Uh, hey, Matt, I wanted to ask you a question about Patrick Mahomes as an NFL head coach, but also I know you're a fan of the game of football. And I wonder what you think particularly makes him special. Hmm. Um, he's from East Texas. <laughs> Some of my favorite football players that I coached during during Baylor are from are from East Texas. Um, 
you know, he's got, uh, he's got a gift. He's got an amazing arm. Um, but you know, he also sees the game. You know, I remember when I first went to Baylor and putting on the previous year or the year before, you know, I'm trying to figure out the big 12 and I'm putting on Baylor, Texas tech. And I mean, he literally is running all around the field and making these unbelievable plays. And, um, you know, he's, he's got a great arm, um, but he's also seems to have a tremendous spirit. You know, he makes the people around him better and has a great feel for the game. And then he's playing for Andy Reed um, and uh, coach Reed, um, you know, quarterbacks play well under him. And um, so I think it's just a, a great combination of things. Let's go to Elena Getzenberg and then Jonathan Alexander. Hey, Matt, I was just wondering, I know you told us you were going to kind of take the weekend to review the Chiefs and all that, but how did the weekend go and how are you kind of starting this week after kind of getting a little time to reset with the buy so far off? How are you kind of approaching this week? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're one of the teams that hasn't had a buy yet. We have a really late buy. Um, so, you know, especially with a young team, our guys are, are uh, you know, they, 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 they've played a lot of plays, you know, and so um, – uh, the guys came in today, they lifted, they, you know, they did all their mobility and movement stuff. Um, we met um, offensively and defensively. We met, you know, special teams wise and met as a team and then um, did uh, just did a little chiefs walkthrough on, on offense and special teams. So it just took today kind of as a bonus day to get ahead, uh, also get back together. And obviously they'll take tomorrow off um, and uh, um, get back together on Wednesday and hit it. Was it nice for you to have, I mean, I know you were working all weekend, but to have a couple of days just to take a breath? Yeah, no, I, I took, you know, I, I went and watched my daughters play soccer on Saturday. Um, you know, I watched, uh, I watched pro football games yesterday at times. I, um, I uh, spent a lot of time going back and rewatching all of our games. You know, I think um, like all teams, you evolve throughout the year and um, just trying to find, you know, trying to find the good, trying to find the bad, trying to categorize things that we can do better, things that we have to get back to, things we have to look at. So just really taking a lot of time to, to look at us, um, I think was my main, my main focus this weekend. I mean, you know, um, you hit the eight and eight, you know, the, the halfway point, the eight game point, and you're sitting there saying like, okay, as we hit the second half of the season, what, um, you know, well, what are we doing well? What do we need to improve upon? All those things. So just trying to take some time and do that. Hey, Matt. Um, hope you're doing well. If I could follow up just on what you said, what was the good and what were the things that you thought you could improve on? Um, I think, that, I think um, you know, some different things as a team, you know, um, you know, what we, what we want to do is we want to be a consistent team, you know, and, um, you know, it's, I, I don't like to talk about the past, but that was one of the things Mr. Tepper, as we talked, you know, he, one of his goals was, hey, I wanted to be a team that was, you know, uh, the same team year in and year out. You know, obviously some years are better than others, but we want to we want to build a consistent winner and put a process in place that consistently does that. And so to look at this year, you know, to, to, to lose the first two, then to win three, now to lose three, you know, we don't want to be a team of streaks. We want to be a team that's, you know, up and down. And so, um, you know, trying to fix the football, but also make sure that we have the same mentality, you know, week in and week out, day in and day out. Um, and, you know, how can we how can we do that better? And so that was one of the, the, the biggest questions. And then I think, you know, really, um, you know, some unique things like, you know, uh, so really our offense in the second half uh, of games has not been what, what we needed to be. Um, um, you know, how do we, how do we improve that? And then, you know, obviously things like third down, but I think the biggest thing was just um, trying to find a way to, to, to build consistency in. And that's, that's really all that we believe in. So I know that those things come in time, but is there anything that I'm missing right now? And then, um, you know, really on offense, you know, in the second half, we have to perform better in the second half of games. Let's go to Jason Huber and then Will Kunkel. Hey Matt, hope you're doing well. Uh, kind of going back to the Chiefs, what makes Travis Kelsey such a unique tight end slash receiver and what makes him so difficult, you know, with you all having to defend him this coming week? Um, he's, you know, obviously extremely big and then athletic with a great feel for the game. 
plays in a great system that you know schemes up ways to get him the ball. So and then he then he's a target on third down and wins on third down. So, um, you know they do so many creative things with him that uh, that he can be a weapon in that regard. And then just uh, in traditional offense, he's just such a great threat on third down. And like all of the elite tight ends in the National Football League, you know he's a he's a matchup issue. You know he's can't play him with a corner. You know he's too big to play with a corner in most safeties. Hard to play, you know, hard to play with a linebacker. So he's he's a matchup issue as well. Hey, Matt, it's Will from Fox. Uh, just to follow up on what Jason was just saying, when you did watch the film, was there something that jumped out in particular that got much better that you progressed at throughout the season or vice versa outside of the offense in the second half? You're saying for us, is there anything that's really Yeah, like when out? you went back to watch all those games, like were you like, oh, damn, that's really good. We've really progressed in that area or, oh, that's really bad or whatever. Yeah, no, I think our, you know, I think uh, the biggest thing, the area that we've been good at, um, that we've improved in has been our red zone defense. You know, um, even the other night, you know, getting key stops down in the red zone or for, for holding people to field goals um, for, you know, forcing people to forcing people really to, to, you know, to have to kick field goals and keep us in the game. I think that's the, the main area on defense that, um, that I've seen, the, that I've seen growth in. Um, and then, uh, and then offensively, you know, really the thing, the area that's been, been like up or down when we protect the quarterback, we've been really good. Um, when the quarterback's been under duress, uh, we haven't been the offense that we want to be. And so it's, you know, it's not one of the things I can say, Hey, it's improved or it's not improved. It's just been up by game, you know, um, and that, you know that can be a lot of things. It can be matchups. It can be you know certain blitz packages, but uh, that certainly tells hopefully everyone in this organization that uh, when 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 Teddy Bridgewater's upright, he's playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. And so we have got to we've got to you know we've got to protect our quarterback and not let them hit him and 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 push him and shove him and tackle him and sack him. And we have got to protect him and. When we do that, the offense works. I mean, make no mistake. The other night, there's there's people running open on third downs, and we're getting sacked. And um, some of those are just great job, great job by them. But some of those are you know missed assignments or, or mental errors or all those different things. And um, it doesn't fall on any one person. Um, it's just all of us across the board. There has to be a commitment, and we talk about it. I hope Thursday night, you know, really cemented it that we've got to protect our quarterback. Um, so, and then the other thing I'd say on defense that's improved, I think, is getting pressure on the quarterback. You know, we think we had three, I don't know if it was three or four sacks here tonight. I think we had one or two called back uh, because of defensive holding in the secondary. But I think, you know, uh, our, our pressure is is getting better and better and better each week, especially with a four-man rush. All right, next question will go to Steve Reed, followed by Miles Simmons. Hey, Matt, I just want to follow up on that. We talked about uh, protection because I think it's a really important point. Um, it, it, do you realize, do you feel like it's maybe part of guys moving in and out of the lineups? You know, Russell's been in and out, you know, you've had guys dealing with COVID things, you had different players in and out. And I guess they say offensive lines like a glove, you know, all kind of all fits together. I mean, is all the moving parts a, a key part of this? Do you think that you've struggled with some protection? Yeah. I mean, um, you, 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 you want to trust all your players, but you don't want, you want to have continuity on the offensive line. I mean, so much of it is not just physical. It's, it's mental, it's communication, it's, it's passing things off. Um, and, um, you know, to me to have that level of consistency, you need, you know, um, you need to have uh, tremendous communication and a feel for each other. And, um, that hasn't quite shown up at the level we'd like it to show up at. Uh, it has in some games. I mean, there've been some games, you know, I think it was just, two, you know, a couple of weeks ago we were saying, boy, it's the second, you know, two straight games we hadn't given up a sack. Well, then you have a game like, you know, Thursday night and it, you know, kind of puts you back to the drawing board in terms of, hey, we've got to get this fixed. Um, I think the biggest thing I'll say though, Steve, is like, you know, is my point of the team is protecting the quarterbacks about everybody. It's about Joe as he calls the play. It's about Pat and, you know, those guys as they draw up the protections. It's about the receivers getting open, you know, versus man coverage so we can get the ball to them. It's about, backs blocking and, you know, uh, o lineman protecting it. and the quarterback making the right protection calls and getting the ball out of his hand. It's really system wide. And as you look at most teams in the NFL, the good teams protect their quarterback. You can't get to them and the bad teams, their quarterbacks usually pretty beat up. And so when we've been a, a good team and we've been a good team, um, you know, in stretches this year, uh, we've protected the quarterback. And so it's just, it's just got to go to the forefront of our, of our thinking. And um, it can't, it can't be an afterthought. 
Hey, Matt, uh, I think this is something we've kind of talked with you about before, but uh, with Curtis Samuel and his third down production with Teddy Bridgewater, I think they've only missed on one target on third down. Is there something that you notice on film that just speaks to why their connection has been so strong there? Because yeah, Curtis is a playmaker. Um, I think, you know, the offensive staff does a good job of, you know, scheming up good opportunities for him. But uh, Curtis catches the ball and gets up the field. And he's fearless. Um, he's a competitor. Um, you know, the one they missed was the other night. You know, we had a, it was a go ball down the right sideline that, you know, Curtis ran by him and we had a chance at. So I think um, Curtis, you know, he, uh, pr he produces in clutch situations. Let's go to David Newton, followed by Joe Person. Yeah, man, I believe you missed uh, Patrick Mahomes by one year. I think he threw what, six touchdown passes against Baylor the year before you arrived. What was the first exposure you ever had to Patrick, if, if you've had any before now? Just just when I got to Baylor and watching that tape from, I, again, I, it, might have been, it must have been the year before. I couldn't remember if it was a year before or two years before, but watching him, watching him on tape and seeing all the things that he could do and um, as a college player, I mean, literally it was like watching the, it was like watching the video game. Um, and I think it was really, I can't remember which there, I went back and watched several years, but there was one game that was back and forth. It was a ton of points um, as the, as the big 12 was at that point. So just seeing him play and do all those things was really, um, really my exposure. Matt, if I could follow up on Curtis, just uh, when you inherited him, what kind of player did you think you were getting and is, is, have your impressions changed at all since then? And then secondly, on the pass protection, was there something over the last week that gave you the feeling that maybe people weren't realizing the importance of it? No, I think all, I think everyone realizes it. I think, um, I think, you know, they, they, uh, Atlanta committed to, to blitzing us and uh, we went into it and understanding that one of our, you know, keys to victory was going to be to have to burn the blitz and we never really did. Um, so I don't, I don't think it was, it fell by the wayside. I just think, um, you know, the first game we were able to, you know, we were able to protect Teddy and you go back historically Falcons versus Panthers. Uh, the Falcons have, when they've won, they've won by taking the ball away and by, um, you know, pressuring the quarterback. And so, uh, we realized like, Hey, we're going to have to protect the ball and protect the quarterback at a high level. And so the first game we did this game, we just didn't. Um, but I, I wouldn't say anyone. I wouldn't say anyone, you know, I mean, guys worked the equally as hard. I just think they came out and they, you know, they play with a, 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 a ferocity the other night. Like they played hard. I have to give them a lot of credit. And, um, um, you know, we have to protect our quarterback better. With regards to, to, to Curtis, um, you know, I, I just watched the tape from last year. I didn't know, know him. I remember, you know, watching him on, on tape at um, Ohio State. Um, Ed, I remember Ed Foley talking about going and seeing him in high school, when, you know, when we were at Temple, I believe we were at Temple. Um, and that's, that's really, that was really it, you know, just watching him on tape and, and seeing that, Hey, this guy's got a great skill set, um, getting him here and then, and then being around him. Um, he, he's, uh, he's just a impressive guy. I mean, he's just, um, you know, one of those guys that's that, you know, so I, I talk about competing a lot and a lot of people think that means, you know, wanting to win, to me, competing means like you want to win at everything, you know, not just win at some of the things or, hey, prove you're good enough, but like you want to you want to win at everything you do. And the thing about Curtis is, is he makes the tough catches, he runs after the catch, he runs the football, uh, but he, he blocks all the time. Um, he blocks for his teammates. He's a really, really unselfish player. And um, you don't really know those things until you're around somebody. Um, not having him in OTAs, you know, to me was – uh, was obviously um, a missed opportunity because we could have really seen what he could do early. But, but I think Joe and 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 Frizz and Jeff knew that he was a good player, and um, but he shows up each and every week. Hey right, guys, we only have two more, so let's go to Jonathan Alexander and then finish with Elena Getzenberg. Hey man, um, going uh, back to uh, one of the early questions about Mike Davis and when Christian comes back. Um, do you see an opportunity uh, to use both Christian and Mike Davis in the same play, even if that means having one of them split out wide or two running backs in the backfield? Oh, no, yeah. I, I mean, there's certainly an opportunity, whether, you know, whether we do that or not, um, you know, remains to be seen. But that's been one of the benefits of, you know, having Curtis out there. You know, even a couple of the times we handed the ball to Curtis, at least once at one of them, we handed the ball to Curtis uh, 
this past week, um, you know, Mike was on the field out at receiver. So um, we all know, we all know a Christian's ability to, you know, line up and play receiver. So uh, I think that, you know, the, the, the door is open to be creative with all those guys. As, and, and I also throw Curtis in there as well. Hey man, I just had two smaller things. Um, I know Friday you had said you were expecting Zach Curry to be available Sunday. I just want to make sure you still thought that was the case. And then I know lots of questions about Dante's toe, but after having to sit out most of that game Thursday, no regression there. Are you kind of expecting him to play Sunday as well? Yeah, and, and I know you guys will get bored with this answer, but like that's really how that I, I'm hopeful for both of them. Like I, you know, if we played now today, you know, both guys, you know, they you know they feel good. It, you know, it's just one of those things with toes, like you know, it gets bent back, it gets bent to the side, and it's it's really, really painful. So um, to answer your question, no, no regression on either guy. Um, so I, I am hopeful that they'll practice Wednesday and play on Sunday, but, you know, that all remains to be seen. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys.